It's always inspiring to see the sub AAA sector lighting itself on fire and shooting for the stars. No retro pixel art or large-headed children in scary worlds for the Technomancer, oh goodness me, no! It's the Mass Effect and Deus Ex full-on action RPG club that it hopes to blag its way into with its dark glasses and suspiciously bulky trench coat. Have you characters, Technomancer? You bet your bollocks we've got characters, party members and quest givers every colour of the miserable bastard rainbow. With struggles and adversities you will invest in like a dot-com startup in the late 90s. Have you built us a world, Technomancer? You gamble your gonads we've built a world, a dark and complex cyberpunk world in which factions battle for supremacy against the backdrop of post-colonisation Mars, and there are only shades of grey. I ain't disputing that last part, Technomancer, but probably not in the way you intended. Now have you combat? You wager your wobbly bits we've got combat! Exciting real-time combat with enough variety of weapons and skills to create a staggering number of alternative playstyles. What number's that, Technomancer? Three! There's three playstyles. Hmm, that is quite a staggering number. Alright, I'm down. Why don't you start by telling me the main character's overall goal? I'll bugger on you, we forgot something. For what it's worth, our hero is Zachariah Mansa, a Technomancer, because on future Mars, everyone's surname is their job, like a village of medieval serfs. We can customise his appearance, but it's not really worth the bother. You can't pick gender, and the available faces are a global showcase of conventional attractiveness. There's also no facial hair, like anywhere, even on the NPCs. Some people have stubble, but nothing that can't just be drawn onto the face texture with felt tips, so I guess we know precisely where the 3D modelling budget ran out. Anyway, our story begins with Zacky Boy, graduating from the Technomancy school of his home city on Mars. The Technomancers are an exclusive and ever so slightly creepy order of mystics bound by vow to protect the secret of their mysterious power. What mysterious power, you ask? They can shoot lightning. That's it. Doesn't seem worth making that much fuss about in a world that also has guns. You could out-equip a Technomancer with a gift certificate and ten minutes in an American shopping mall. And the big secret you're all vowed to protect is that Technomancers are technically mutants, the lowest case of Mars society because aren't they always? This too doesn't seem worth making that much of a fuss about, and could probably lose all its impact with a few minor societal reforms. I mean, one suspects mutants are only an underclass because they're such ugly motherfuckers and the Technomancers all look like various incarnations of Robert Patrick, but it's Zachariah's devotion to keeping this secret that earns him the ire of the evil ruling authority authority. Once the graduation's over, Zack starts work as a peace officer working with the evil ruling authority. So while I was at that point about as engaged as a dad chaperoning his daughter to a One Direction concert, I figured I was obliged to at least play as far as the bit where we get framed and the sinister authority turns against us, which anyone with the majority of their brain still inside their skull could see coming. Any game in which you start as a member of a sinister authority who interacts with poor people and suspiciously attractive revolutionaries will almost certainly contrive you to be no longer a member of the sinister authority before the second act, with the exception of modern warfare shooters, where you usually stay in the sinister authority and French kiss assault rifles for six hours. It's the usual action RPG format, quest givers give you a place on the map to go to, you go to that place, talk to someone at that place, and occasionally they become so incensed by the audacity with which you go to places talking to people that you're forced to beat them and all their friends to death, in a Dragon Age-esque disorganised melee. There's the inevitable stealth option, but the stealth attack doesn't even kill the target, and it alerts everyone in the area anyway, so it's as much use as a handbrake on a shark. Otherwise I've seen worse combat. I went for club and shield specialisation because fuck it, let's just turn every game into Dark Souls. And here's my top tip, keep swinging and press block if the enemy dodges twice, because you'll get a free parry. Combat got really fucking boring after I figured that out, but the game compensates for that. Remember when I said it was building a dark and complex cyberpunk world? Well the emphasis was on dark. The graphics get so shadowy it's almost impossible to tell the human enemies and my party members apart. They're all silhouettes with no beards, and half the time it's difficult to tell whether they're winding up attack animations or checking themselves for prostate cancer. So getting back to that inevitable first act twist, it turned out I was giving too much credit when I predicted the evil authority would frame you for something before they do the big betrayal scene, or indeed that they'd show you the big betrayal scene. What happens is, two of Zack's mates intercept him on the way to work and say, hey, they're setting up the big betrayal scene in there, might want to just piss off. And he takes their word for it. Blimey, those budget cuts hit everyone, don't they? Technomancer is certainly more at home to Trevor Tell than Siobhan Show, and by Christ does it tell. Characters can't be said to converse in this game, they merely recite paragraphs of exposition vaguely in the direction of other people. And sometimes the game doesn't even get as far as the telling. Those two mates who warn you off from the betrayal pinata party, I'm prepared to swear that this was the first time we were meeting one one of them, but she's presented like we already know who she is. Maybe I hadn't paid enough attention because I was distracted cataloguing all the metal wall textures. It's possible she was one of the NPC quest givers we met earlier. They were all fairly interchangeable, dark clothes, boring voice, no beard. Whatever, betrayal allegedly occurs somewhere, presumably, and we're forced to flee the city to pursue our quest to… that's right, we never figured that out, did we? Well there's some overarching thing about the Technomancers having the lifelong goal to re-establish contact with Earth, but that's more of a hobby, really, and even if they succeed I failed to see how it would help. I don't see the scrappy survivalist communities of Mars crafting a space probe.
programme out of radio parts and back issues of Top Gear magazine. All that we actually do is go from settlement to settlement, sorting out random issues and be the pigeon to the main villain's dick dastardly, who hounds us apparently out of having literally nothing else to do with his time. It's a shame because accepting a few petty niggles, like the way Zachariah shuffles forward a few steps every time you try to stop moving, so getting in front of a small panel or dustbin to interact with is like keeping hold of a bar of soap in the bath, the game is technically functional. But it can't tell an interesting story for shit, and in an RPG that's 90% of the final grade. They failed to find the interesting story in a game about lightning wizards from Mars. That's like failing to find the homoerotic subtext in professional wrestling. <laughs>